Hi, my name is Kathy Schlegel and I'm a zookeeper here at the Minnesota Zoo. Love tours are an annual thing that we do here at the Minnesota Zoo. It's kind of an adults only view of the animals at the zoo, courtship, mating habits, raising children, that sort of thing. That's a, that's a territorial thing pretty much. Um, they pretty, they, they want to kind of let all the other lemurs that might be in the area know that they're over here and this is their territory. They'll do it in response often to... Maybe a strange noise in the building, something different that they haven't seen before. But they do make that noise a couple of times a day at least. And it's only the red rough lemurs that make that loud vocalization. The ringtails do vocalize, but it's much softer, calmer sound. Komodo dragon, they're very interesting being lizards. Their courtship is um, kind of interesting. The males will come up to the females and maybe tap at them a little, do a little bit of tongue flicking, a little nudging, just to see if they're in the mood. It's been shown too, pretty recently, that Komodo dragons can do something called parthogenesis, which means that a female who has never mated with a male can produce fertile eggs that will hatch into baby Komodo dragons. So in, in uh, the case of some lizards like the Komodo dragons, they don't even need men in their lives. They can reproduce all on their own. The most gibbons that you would see together at a time is probably four, which would be the two adults, a juvenile, and then an infant before they kick that juvenile out. So they're not a big group animal. They uh, just have the two adults typically in a group. The males and females are different colors, but they're both the same species of gibbon. The females are that whitish buff color, and the males are black, but again, they're both the same species. They're sexually dimorphic, so males and females are different colors. Tia masturbates a lot. Um, she is a very sexual gibbon, and when Bailey is not interested, she takes care of things herself. If Tia is in the mood and she is in estrus, they can be breeding a lot. It can be almost constant that she's soliciting breeding from the male. And how she does that is she pretty much runs over to him and sticks her butt in his face and says, here I am, let's go. And sometimes he obliges, sometimes he ignores her. With sharks, you can tell males from females by looking at the underside of them. They have a pair of claspers. Um, it's uh, kind of by their, well, pretty much where you think they would be is where the claspers are. They're the male reproductive organs. When, uh, when the time is right, the male shark will bite the female's pectoral fins, the fins that come out of the side there. And if she's in the mood, she'll let him hang on. She won't bite back. If she's not in the mood, she'll, she'll be aggressive back and, and not let him continue. But then he pivots so that his claspers meet her cloaca to deposit the sperm. During the love tours, we'll often have some shark eggs in their cases with the little baby sharks in there kind of swimming around. You can see some leftover, that kind of gooey stuff that's hanging on that piece of coral. It just looks like fluff. That's, um, that's one of the, that's, I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but that's what attaches a shark egg to the coral reef so that it doesn't float away. Pigs have a corkscrew-shaped penis, and the reason that they have that is because of the female's anatomy. In order to get the sperm where it needs to go, there's actually a corkscrew-looking, I'm not even sure how to say it, he needs to have a corkscrew-shaped penis in order to deposit the sperm where it needs to go inside the female. Frogs pretty much have orgies where they, they all get together in a pond, calling to each other. That's frog song. That's uh, mating songs, really. They're called to uh, procreate. And they all get together. And uh, sometimes it, it kind of depends. Females may just lay their eggs and leave and wait for another male to come along and fertilize them. Sometimes the male will sit on top of the back of the female and fertilize the eggs as she's laying them. For the most part, this is a pretty specialized tour. A lot of the stuff that we talk about really is, I mean, it is adults only stuff, and a lot of the volunteers aren't even familiar with this information. It's pretty much stuff that we've all it gathered to together. Be yeah, yeah. And it would have to be someone, too, who, you know, potentially has done these love tours and knows some of the extra nitty gritty 
So it really is dirty a details. Look. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a very exclusive look. Yeah.